Did NVIDIA give you a... It did, an gave umbrella. you a right to dream big, right? Yeah. Right. Do not pass go. Because it can happen. Do not pass go. Because your company can but it's at eight, quadruple its, it's revenues. It's 90 times earnings. Doesn't matter, right? 90 times earnings? 90 times earnings. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm also... Look, P, uh, Palantir is on again today. That's, uh, a, that's at 50. Anywhere but here. 50 and times sales. Palantir is right back on today. Isn't it? So what's the multiple to revenues of Yeah, Palantir? but there they have a rule of 40. Sure. They've got good gross margins yep. and, and good uh, fast growth. But Palantir, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to find someone on for tomorrow and then maybe the next day. <laughs> they, maybe there's a Palantir person who's like the treasurer, if you could get that. There person. is a growing cast of, uh, of executives from the company who will come on our air. Today it was their head of defense on this expanded Friday contract their, with special the, ops. Right, their think guy was presented. Alex, we, I know you've well, got a there is close relationship with Alex Clark. Uh, <laughs> there's also a feeling that they're going to be among the beneficiaries of the incoming administration, they particularly are. given the prevalence of technology-related uh, or technology uh, CEOs and or investors in at least giving advice. And a lot of it seems to be focused to a certain extent on the Defense Department right. and changing mode of warfare and things of that nature. They would certainly be a beneficiary. But you wake up. Kramer suggested that, that Doge could turn to Palantir for help cutting defense budget spending. He noted that most people don't realize that some government departments could be cut back substantially. You get up really early, okay? And you turn on and you see our ticker. And there's pounds here, something like uh, five dollars and eighty cents. Nothing's happening, but there are people who are now trading, literally around the clock, and they're moving pounds here up, and they're watching it and they're thinking, "This is something I thought you could do when I was in 1981." I said, "Well, my, one of my bosses, said, listen, I can move this stock with just some buying." These guys are in, and they want to move it up. That's what they live for. They live to move the stock up, not, and then they don't sell. But David, they hodl. Hoddle? Hold, hold on for dear life. Oh, thank you. How many times do we have to explain that? I'm, listen, I'm old. What do you want from me? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, you... I mean, I make you look like a, like, you know... This isn't to say Palantir is a bad company and won't continue to expand. It just means its valuation has gotten far ahead of its business. It also doesn't mean PLTR is a meme stock either. So you may want to go with the inverse Kramer crowd on this one. <laughs> What are you doing to me? That was bad because that will be that that right, will be blockchain a doing it. Flag. But I do think, Carl, in December you don't sell winners. <laughs> you let them go higher. That's and do we you, have but winners. Do you then sell SMCI? in January? Is that what you do? Yes, and I've seen that happen. But you know what, David? January is so far from now. And, and what are the <laughs> assumptions being made away. now, Jim, yes. that are going to prove incorrect? That's what you always have to think about. Well, I just, there, we know okay. there are going to be right, so all right, many. All right. I have to believe that there will be IPOs and you will sell uh, Palantir to buy some, uh, or App Lovin to buy some of the new deals. Or, David, those are, I'm saying enterprise software is so overheated right now. Anything, anything enterprise software, anything that helps, instant, helps companies, web designers, build a platform or is a platform yep. for big sales that's getting huge contracts is. I share stock market's latest news, datas and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. I'll buy. Yeah. That's why we're going to watch some of the big earnings this week, Adobe and some others. Oh uh, to Jim's point, it's interesting that NVIDIA is down pre-market. Uh, China says it is investigating the chip maker over possible violations of the country's anti-monopoly law. The nation's antitrust regulator adds the company suspected of violating commitments that it made during its 2020 acquisition of Mellanox. Uh, the probe comes in the wake of U.S. actions aimed, of course, at restricting chip sales in China. Yeah, they should have thought that before. I mean, Mellanox was a deal that everybody just said, look, we're going to give it an incredible amount of scrutiny, and they did that. Uh, this is not like the Google contract to Apple in order to be able to keep us at the, the default, David. Now, you know that these are, this it could be, you can't have this kind of remorse years later and think you're going to have an impact. He pointed to significant gains across various sectors, including aerospace, housing, retail, and healthcare. I have started a new YouTube channel by the name of Wall Street Detective, where I will post secret and exclusive updates of Wall Street. Subscribe now to stay up to date. Link is in the description below. What do you think? You, you know, Sipius, what, you know, what can they do to tower, tie it against us? What is their... Wait, they can't wait, break up wait. a deal. No, no, I'm saying we can block, is here. No, I'm saying Sorry, we can, what we are you talking block, about? We block deals, but once the deals go through, we tend not to reopen them. 
That is, had a good that, is, that is typically the case, I yes. I think that that was also, I thought that was also the way of China. Once they've approved something, gave it a hard look. I, I, I don't know enough, nor do I think many know enough about the uh, Chinese antitrust regulatory apparatus to make assumptions. You mean, it makes, you make it sound like it's in flux. Kramer said, referring to Palantir's CEO, Palantir has the next generation of how we're going to do cyber warfare. And the idea of just hardware, hardware, hardware that is constantly over budget is the kind of thing that I think Musk is really after. CEO Alex Karp attributed this growth to the increasing adoption of artificial intelligence, AI, by US government clients. This period also saw a significant increase in the size of the deals the company was securing. The company signed 104 contracts worth over $1 million during the quarter, indicating a rising demand for its services. Kramer acknowledged that Palantir Technologies Inc., NetSuite's FSSL Inc., stock is performing better than NVIDIA for the year and attributed the gains to defense contracts. CEO Alex Karp talked a big game until the recent quarter when Palantir soared on an amazing, amazing three months. They verified his chest pounding and ratified the stock's run. It's now up to 253% for the year. Yeah, it's doing better than NVIDIA. The big gains have come from revolutionary Defense Department contracts. They could bring our stodgy military bureaucracy more in the cyber warfare era. By the way, these guys really excel at one thing, most definitely <laughs> the procurement process. Palantir is a leading developer of advanced software platforms that specialize in integrating and analyzing complex data to support decision making. The company has long been known for its work with government agencies, providing critical tools for data-driven operations. In its third quarter earnings report, it showed strong growth with revenue climbing 30% year over year to reach $726 million. Kramer noted that this broad-based rally resulted in strong performances on Tuesday, with the Dow climbing 427 points, the S&P rising by 1.23%, and the Nasdaq soaring by 1.43%. However, he tempered his optimism by adding that days like Tuesday might prove to be outliers in the coming weeks. Read also Jim Cramer's latest game plan, 15 stocks to watch, and Jim Cramer is talking about these seven stocks. Kramer took the opportunity to highlight 10 stocks he believes will thrive and said, I want to highlight 10 stocks that I believe will do well under either candidate. A who's who of acclamation, companies that almost have to do well because of seismic trends and savvy managements, companies that no White House would get hung up on, either because they're beneath notice or they're perceived as good corporate citizens by both sides. Stocks in industries that neither Trump nor Harris have ever targeted in the past. If you want to get Wall Street news at lightning speed before everyone else, like big investors and hedge funds do, then join my Patreon, where we share hedge fund level information for just five bucks per month. It's a new year offer. Join before it ends. Link is in the description below. See you there. He also raised an important question for the viewers. If you had the results of the election in hand, would you really know what to buy or sell? According to Kramer, answering that question is far more complicated than it seems. He emphasized his list of stocks that can thrive regardless of the election outcome. These are companies that have no clear political adversaries in Washington, making them relatively safe bets. Kramer acknowledged, however, that many stocks that seem like obvious picks for one candidate or another often have hidden dynamics that don't get enough attention. In the end, this presidential prognostication game is meaningless until we start hearing about cabinet appointments. Those will tell us a lot. Then, we can figure out really who the winners and losers are. Right now, though, there are just too many political angles to every single stock story. Kramer praised Palantir Technologies Inc. CEO La Preza, CEO, and mentioned that the stock is a crowd favorite. Palantir brags about making its clients more lethal and judging by the numbers, which included accelerated revenue growth and phenomenal margins, they're clearly accomplishing that goal. How strong were these results at Palantir? I'm going to quote CEO Alex Karp, who is indomitable. Given how strong our results are, I almost feel that we should just go home. Palantir is a prominent developer of software platforms specializing in complex data integration and decision making. The company primarily serves government agencies, particularly in the intelligence sector, as well as commercial clients. After recently joining the S&P 500, Palantir, NICLT, 
delivered a strong third quarter earnings report. It reported revenue of $725.5 million, marking a 30% increase year over year and outperforming estimates. In addition to the revenue growth, the company also saw a significant improvement in its profit margins. The company reported a nearly 20% increase in profit margin from the previous quarter and a striking 275% rise compared to the same period last year. Overall, PLTR ranks 10th on Jim Cramer's list of stocks that can do well regardless of who wins. While we acknowledge the potential of PLTR as an investment, our conviction lies in the belief that AI stocks hold greater promise for delivering higher returns and doing so within a shorter time frame. If you are looking for an AI stock that is more promising than PLTR, but that trades at less than five times its earnings, check out our report about the cheapest AI stock. What to know? Palantir, which rallied nearly 50% over just the past month, may be the only stock outshining NVIDIA Corp. This year, Kramer said Tuesday on CNBC's Squawk on the Street. While both companies have recorded significant gains in 2024, driven by their positioning in the AI space, Kramer credits Musk for driving the recent momentum in Palantir shares. Palantir is up a lot because I, I believe Musk is going to turn to them and say, the Defence Department, it's yours. Get rid of all those people, Kramer said. President-elect Donald Trump recently announced plans to nominate Musk and Vivek Ramaswani to a new Department of Government Efficiency, D-A-O-G-E, in an effort to curtail government spending. The Tesla CEO could look to Palantir to modernise the Defence Department and reduce reliance on outdated methods of warfare. Palantir is adamant about creating systems that don't put people in harm's way, but the Defence Department is stuck in its ways, Kramer said. Why it matters. Kramer's take underscores how influential Musk is expected to be under the incoming Trump administration. It's worth noting that Doge wouldn't actually be able to cut federal spending since it isn't a real government department and would need to be created with congressional approval. And Congress authorizes all federal spending, including to the Defense Department. They like big things, big expensive programs. Alex Karp is not like that. Palantir shares ripped higher at the beginning of November after the company reported strong quarterly results driven by unrelenting AI demand. Revenue jumped 30% year over year and customer count climbed 39% on continued strength in the US. The growth of our business is accelerating and our financial performance is exceedingly expectations as we meet an unwavering demand for the most advanced artificial intelligence technologies from our US government and commercial customers, Karp said earlier this month. Price action. Palantir shares were up $64.85 at $64.85 at the time of publication, according to Benzinga Pro. Palantir Technologies has ridden the artificial intelligence wave for all it is worth. What started as a number-crunching outfit, launched with investment money from the Central Intelligence Agency and other three-letter spy shops, has transformed into a premier AI business, helping enterprise-class companies analyze and understand the trillions of data points they create on their customers, logistics, and inventory. Into actionable news. The stock went public in 2020 at $10 a share, but today trades at $65 a stub. That's a 590% gain during a time the S&P 500 only returned 78% for investors. That's a compounded annual growth rate, KGR, of nearly 60%. In just the last three months, shares have more than doubled. Yet PLTR stock trades at 330 times earnings, 56 times sales, and more than 150 times the free cash flow it produces. Those sort of nosebleed valuations suggest Palantir is riding an AI bubble. Uh, although the public sector is still where most of Palantir's revenue comes from, government contracts tend to be lumpy and unpredictable. Uh, the commercial sector is the more natural outlet for Palantir's deep analysis capabilities. AI still has a long growth runway ahead of it though we may see businesses begin looking for the payoff and cost savings that have been promised. Spending on the technology may slow, which could cause Palantir's valuations to return to earthly dimensions. An AI pure play or just a meme stock? While the data analytics stock continues to grow its customer count, up 39% in the third quarter, it had just 321 US commercial clients, generating $179 million in revenue. And though its revenue is growing smartly, the rate of growth is slowing. It nearly doubled over the first two years of its public existence, but at just half that rate over the past two years. 
the next NVIDIA could change your life. If you missed out on NVIDIA's historic run, your chance to see life-changing profits from AI isn't over. The 24-7 Wall Street analyst who first called NVIDIA's AI-fueled rise in 2009 just published a brand new research report named The Next NVIDIA. Click here to download your free copy. NVIDIA has returned 250-fold in the past 10 years as artificial intelligence took off. But if you missed out on NVIDIA's historic run, your chance to see life-changing profits from AI isn't over. The next NVIDIA, stocks have been revealed in a new report and they're ready to dominate the next wave of growth. The report is absolutely free. Simply enter your email below to receive a copy today. Enter your best email. By providing your email address, you agree to receive communications from us regarding website updates and other offerings that may be of interest to you. You have the option to opt out of these emails at any moment. For more information, please review our disclaimer and terms of use. Read more. Investing, Data Analytics, Jim Cramer, Jim Cramer Quotes, Meme Stocks, Palantir Technologies, PLTR Stock, is PLTR stock overvalued? Palantir's outsized gains in 2000 and 2024 can be tied to an improving bottom line. In the last 12 months, its net income has risen to $476.6 million, up from $209.8 million. Comparatively, it reported cumulative net losses of over $2 billion between 2020 and 2022. The AI software company has reported a positive free cash flow since 2021. Its free cash flow in the last 12 months has totaled $980.3 million, up from $321.2 million in 2019. Analysts expect its free cash flow to rise to $1.16 billion in 2025 and $1.5 billion in 2026. Further, analysts expect earnings to expand from $0.25 cents in 2024 to $0.06 cents in 2026. So priced at 110x forward earnings, PLTR stock trades at a lofty valuation. Despite its expensive multiples, Bank of America just reiterated its buy rating for PLTR stock and raised its price target to a new street height of $75 from $55. BFA explained Palantir's growth in the US markets and a widening competitive moat make it a top investment choice as it now serves a wide range of clients across sectors. Their investment bank projects the government business to grow by 29% annually in the next three years, up from 24%, and said that Palantir is well positioned to digitize business processes as companies turn to AI and automation to boost profitability. Due to rising demand, B of A expects Palantir's commercial business to grow by 34% annually over the next three years, up from an earlier forecast of 32%. B of A's bullish opinion is a rare one for Palantir. Out of the 15 analysts covering PLTR stock, only two recommend a strong buy, while six recommend a hold, and seven suggest a moderate sell or strong sell. The average target price for the tech stock is $33.78, indicating a downside of almost 49% from current levels. B of A's new $75 target implies expected upside of 14.4%.